Hi, I will show you how to compute and plot inverse Laplace transform in MATLAB. Here I have a transfer function. This is a relatively simple transfer function, so we can easily decompose it and calculate inverse Laplace transform analytically. So this one gives us e power minus 2t, this one gives us e power minus 3t, always we have ut next to them. Now in many cases we have a transfer function which is very complicated, so we cannot decompose it and calculate the time domain um, function directly. So in those cases, we want to get help from MATLAB. So I will show you how to achieve this. Let us first implement these and see how to get inverse Laplace transform of this function in MATLAB. Okay, so zoom in. So we define sims s f is equal to one divided by that function s plus three and here we have s plus two and f is inverse Laplace of f okay so if I run this one we will see that MATLAB gives us the same answer as we found uh, by hand. All right, so this is okay. Now, if you want to plot it, we can, can add time, t is equal to zero, let's say zero, two, two, five, plot t and f. Normally we use this, we have some um, vector, let's say, and then we define a time, we plot it. But this one doesn't work. If you if you use this one, you will have this error. Because this f is not uh, a numeric vector that you can directly plot it. So what we have to do is first to calculate, let's say, f. What is f? We have to substitute uh, the value of t into that function and calculate it. So we can use this function, sub f. Okay, and then we can plot t versus f1. So we substitute t into the into f and we get f1, and now we can basically plot t and f1. Okay, so if we plot this, so in this case you observe that we have the, the plot, and if I now type f1 here, that would be the vector of f1. But as you notice is that all values of f1, let's say f3, the third component, it is actually in this format. It's not in the nice numeric format. If you want to get a final numeric value, we can actually use another function, it's eval. So instead of having only subs, we can add eval of sub. So in this case, it will also evaluate those values. So if I run it, okay, so again, we have the plot. And in this case, if I type F1, you see that it has numeric values. So for example, F1 component number four, it gives me a number. Or max F1, give me the maximum value of this graph, which is here. Okay, so this is good. Now let us use a more complicated function. So this was a simple function. Now, this is a little bit more complex. It says five plus two is four plus some other components. Yeah, I also clear this. Okay, so if I run this one, again, we have the nice plot and also MATLAB gives us the, the solution here. So exponentially by minus two T divided by 35 and so on. Now, for both of these two functions, the first function and the second function, uh, the roots of these polynomials are actually nice numbers. So they are either integer, they are maybe fraction, or even if they are irrational numbers, they can be written as a compact form. So for example, a square root of two, a square root of three, these are irrational numbers, but you can write them as a square root of two or pi or those things. But there are many numbers that you cannot write them in a nice format. They are just irrational and they are just continuing. You cannot show them in a compact form. In those cases, actually, MATLAB will not 
give you a nice final closed form formula like this. For any cases that MATLAB can calculate closed form formula, then this function will work. So as you saw when we when we calculated it, it plots for us, it evaluated. So F1, for example, number four, it gives me like that. Or if I calculate maximum F1, it gives me the maximum of these functions. So we have all the values in time domain. So that's good. But there are situations in which the roots are not uh, nice numbers, as I said. So let, let us look at this other function. So in this case, for example, we have S3 plus S2 plus S plus 0 0.1. This one has roots which you cannot write them in a compact form. They just continue. Um, okay, so let us see what happens if we if we calculate um, this inverse Laplace transform. So you see that MATLAB gives us the inverse Laplace transform as sum of uh, exponential, which depends on the root of that uh, polynomial. So in this case, because the roots are not nice number, MATLAB will leave that as this function. Okay, so I will come back to that formula later on. But what we can see is that right now, this evaluation function will not work anymore. So you cannot directly use the evaluation function here. Because inside this um, inverse Laplace transform, we have uh, S3. This is the index for, the, for this polynomial to show the roots of it. And then we have also another parameter k, which then uh, basically this summation will go over k. So for k1, k2, k3. Basically, there are some other symbols in, in, in that equation, which um, that's why evaluation function will not work. So if we want evaluation function to work, we have to actually also define s3 and k as uh, other symbols. So let me I do it maybe differently. I will copy all of these. And we'll make this one. And here we have S3 and K. In this case, the evaluation function will work. So if I run this one, let me I clear. So in this case, we basically, we define S3 and K as other symbols. And it will take much longer time to perform this type of calculation right now. Um, and eventually you have it. But if you type F1, you have the evaluation, but each of the component of F1, uh, they are in the, each of the components are in this format. So they are not in the nice uh, final format. So that's why uh, evaluation will take quite some time. Okay, so an alternative solution is to use uh, a different function. So we define sims. In this case, we define S and T as symbols. So let me I copy this part. This part I should copy it here. Instead of f equal i Laplace f, we write f t is equal inverse Laplace of f. And now we define f1 is v p a. So this is the other command f t. And here we can plot t and f1. So this is another form of doing this evaluation. Let us see how does it work. So if I evaluate it, we will see that we have the response and we have F1, but F1 is already evaluated. So now if I type, for example, what is F1 3, it immediately gives me the number. So if I say max F1, it immediately gives me the number. But if I use the previous setup, so let me use the previous one. Firstly, it takes much longer time to run. And secondly, after you calculate this F1, uh, if you want to analyze on those numbers, you will have you have to spend a lot of time to analyze them because every every time it has to recalculate them. So now you see that if I type max F1, it takes some time to calculate that max. But when I use this one, and if I write now max F1, it is quite faster. In case MATLAB can give you 
the inverse Laplace transform as a nice format. Like for example, in this case, then you better use this method. So you use subs function and use evaluation function. This is faster. But in case MATLAB cannot provide the final inverse Laplace uh, transform in a closed form, then you better use VPA function. Okay, so we have learned how to calculate and plot inverse Laplace transform in MATLAB. But we have also noticed that for certain polynomials, uh, the inverse Laplace transform in MATLAB is given in this format. And uh, now let us look, what does this mean even here? This is a bonus for those people who are very much interested in. Okay, so we notice that we have a Simpson here. This means that uh, we have a certain expression and it will be added multiple times. So here we have k, 1, and 3, which means we have this expression here. One time it calculated for k equal to 1, and one time calculated for k equal to 2, and one time calculated for k equal to 3, and add them together. Okay, so now what is this expression? Uh, we see that here we have um, exponential of root of this one. This is the polynomial that we have uh, already given there. So this one basically calculates the first root and multiply it to t. So e power, the first root multiplied to t. And then it, it's divided or basically multiplied by another coefficient. Now let's see what does this mean. I have already written this here. So this is our polynomial S3 plus S2 plus S plus 0 0.1. It has three roots. Let's say the roots are minus S1, minus S2, minus S3. In that case, we can actually rewrite this transfer function in this format, S plus S1, multiply S plus S2, multiply S plus S3. Now, if you use partial fraction method, we can decompose this into this format. So a constant divided S plus S1, plus another constant, S plus S2, and so on. So now, obviously, if we take inverse Laplace transform, this would be A multiply E power minus S1T plus B E power minus S2T, and so on. This is actually what we have here. So this is the root, which in this case we assume is minus S1. So that's why we have minus S1 here. But in this case, this is the actual root. Multiply T. So we have multiply T. And uh, there is a constant, A. This sim sum will, will calculate it for three times. So one for K1, for the first root, for the second root, and for the third root. So we will get something like this. Then what are these coefficients A and B and C? So in order to calculate coefficients A and B and C, we know from theory that, for example, coefficient A can be calculated by multiplying Fs times S plus S1. And then we have to evaluate it at S equal minus S1. So if I multiply Fs, multiply S plus S1, obviously this S plus S1 term will disappear and we will be left with this term, with the rest. And we should plug in uh, S equal to minus S1. So we will get A is equal 1 over minus S1 plus S2, multiply minus S1 plus S3. Now, if you multiply these, what do we get? We get A is equal 1 over S1 power 2, minus S1, S3, minus S2, S3, plus S2, S3. Okay. So for a polynomial, let's say we have a third order polynomial, or actually any order polynomial, these rules are true. So the sum of all roots is equal to minus A. If we write the polynomial in this format, it will be minus a here. Some of the multiplication of two terms, so x1, x2 plus x1, x3 plus x2, x3 is equal to b, and multiplication of all terms is equal to minus c. Now, in our polynomial, we had this polynomial, s3 plus s2 plus s plus 0 0.1, and the roots, we considered them as minus s1, minus s2, minus s3. So in this case, the sum of those minus S1, minus S2, minus S3 would be minus 1, because here the co coefficient of S2 is minus 1, which we can conclude that sum of S1 plus S2 plus S3 is 1. And sum of the multiplication of two terms, so minus S1 multiply minus S2 
plus minus s1 multiply minus s3 plus minus s2 multiply s3 here it should be s3 is equal 1 because here the constant here is 1 and of course minus all the minuses disappear so we have this equal to 1 so now we can calculate a actually because a is s1 power 2 and here we can factorize 1 minus s1 this would be s2 plus s3 comes here but s2 plus s3 we know that is 1 minus s1 so instead of this i can write actually 1 minus s1 later on or here s2 multiply s3 is actually 1 minus s1 um, multiply s2 plus s3 so i can write instead of s2 s3 i can write this one so if you add them together so s1 power 2 minus 2 s1 s2 plus s3 plus 1 and now we can replace s2 plus s3 as i explained from this equation uh, it becomes 1 minus s1 so you replace that we get basically s1 power 2 plus 2 s1 power 2 so we have 3 s1 power 2 minus 2 s1 plus 1 and let us multiply it by 10 so we get 10 divided by 30 s1 power 2 minus 20 s1 plus 10 okay so why i did this calculation because here you can see that we have a 10 here that 10 is actually this one and here you see that we have 30 roots of the that polynomial power 2 so this is for the first root for example power 2 multiply 30 and that also we have 30 this one plus 20 multiplied root so here we have 20 but we assume that the roots for us is minus s1 minus s2 minus s3 so minus s1 is actually the root which we have also here and plus 10 so the same thing will happen if you calculate b and c instead of s1 you will get s2 and s3 and that's why we have this summation as the inverse laplace transform of that function all right bye